Hey, Stet here. There are a lot of amazing creatures out there. But one of my favorites, my second favorite in fact, is the mantis shrimp with its cool eyes and fast punch. Now mantis shrimp are arthropods, a group consisting of animals with a hard exoskeleton and jointed legs such as spiders, insects, crabs, lobsters, millipedes, centipedes, etc. Mantis shrimp are also crustaceans, a collective group of most arthropods with the exception of insects, spiders, and others. They are of the order Stomatopoda from the Greek stoma, meaning mouth, and pod, meaning feet, making mouth foot or mouth feet. It's just a stab in the dark, but I believe this may be referring to their frontmost appendages in which they use to secure prey. And just as a side note, despite being called shrimp, they're not actually shrimp. Size-wise, mantis shrimp typically grow to 10 centimeters or 4 inches, though the largest can grow longer than a foot, to nearly 40 centimeters or 15 inches. They have a long carapace or plate-like shell covering their abdomen and the head. Five pairs of legs sit under the abdomen while three pairs are near the head and are used for walking. Near the front are the main appendages. Now here is where the cool part starts. There are two types of mantis shrimp, smashers and spearers. A smasher's front appendages will have blunt ends which they use to break open the hard shells and exoskeletons of shellfish and crustaceans. While spears' front appendages are sharp and pointed, using to stab the flesh of softer prey. What's amazing is how fast they can strike. Mantis shrimp are known to have striking speeds of about 80 kilometers per hour or 50 miles per hour. At that speed, mantis shrimp can create cavitation bubbles from the force that collapse, resulting in a shock wave and a small flash of light. Some have known to break aquarium glass. Shocking, isn't it? But that's not the only cool thing. Their eyes, suspended on stalks, move in independently like a chameleon. They can move up and down, side to side, and turn using the stalks. Their eyesight is remarkable as well. They are known to have at least 14 different cones in their eye for detecting color. In comparison, humans have three cones for detecting blue, red, and green light, while other animals have four additionally picking up ultraviolet light. With this in mind, I can't even begin to imagine what the creatures must see or comprehend what colors they pick up. But it must be remarkable. Speaking of color, mantis shrimp come in many different varieties, but my favorite is the peacock mantis shrimp with its stunning colors of blue and green for the body and red and orange for the legs. Now, mantis shrimp mainly reside in tropical and subtropical waters, though there are a few temperate species as well. They tend to live in the shallows, making burrows in the sand and rarely come out. Mantis shrimp are voracious predators and eat a wide range of prey, and their diet really depends on their tools. As I said before, smashers eat hard-shelled prey from shellfish to crabs, stunning and killing them while cracking their hard shells. Spears, on the other hand, will eat fleshier prey like live fish, shrimp, and worms. Mantis shrimp are also known to eat other mantis shrimp. Which counts as cannibalism if the victim is its own species now that I think about it. They are known to hunt outside of their burrows, but for the most part, they are ambush predators. They'll hide and wait at the entrance of their burrows, then strike when prey comes swimming by. And this is for good reason as mantis shrimp will keep their eggs in their burrows. In some species, females will lay two clutches of eggs, one for the female to look after and one for the male to look after, both hunting for food. While in other species, the female looks after the eggs, while the male hunts to provide food for the mother. It's interesting to note that while mantis shrimp are mostly monogamous, meaning they will have one partner at a time, most likely for the rest of their lives, Males have the potential for infidelity, abandoning their burrow to follow the scent of another female in another abandoned burrow. They'll be more likely to move in if the female is larger, as they'll produce larger and stronger offspring, but at the cost of the male having to supply even more food for the larger female. Now, seeing as these guys are in no immediate threat, I'll take this time to talk about them in aquariums. Saltwater aquarists seem to be of two opinions regarding mantis shrimp. They're either cool pets or horrid pests. They can make great pets if kept in a tank alone, and they're pretty easy to take care of if you feed them every once in a while. It might be safe to have an acrylic tank, just in case of tank smashing. However, 
introduce one into a reef tank full of fish, either intentionally or accidentally via hitchhikers hiding in live rock, and say goodbye to the rest of your fish tank. As I said before, they are voracious predators. And if you do pick up a hitchhiker in your live rock, you will notice your tank residents disappearing rather quickly. Hence why saltwater aquarists will want these things out of the tank immediately. With that said, I'd still get one, especially the peacock shrimp with that amazing color. And there you have it. I hope I introduced you to an amazing creature and intrigued you. Thanks for watching. Stet out.